Yes. Room service. Oh. <laughs> Time, there was a little prince who lived on a planet hardly any big. <laughs> Go along, Willa. Should we read chapter five? My kitty. on my shirt, but I spilled something on my shirt. Well, hello there. We're going to continue our little prints. Yes, we are. <laughs> and I've got a sleeping dog beside me. I thought it would be so cool to have Harriet here for the reading for you. And I've got some tea that I'm finishing here. So get your warm beverage or your wine or brandy or whatever it is that you enjoy while I read to you. It's a beautiful day out. It's just really cold. So it's a good day to huddle up in here and read. So grab your beverage and let's get to our story. Chapter three. It took me a long time to understand where he came from. The little prince, who asked me so many questions, never seemed to hear the ones I asked him. It was things he said quite at random that bit by bit explained everything. For instance, when he first caught sight of my airplane, I won't draw my airplane, that would be too complicated for me. He asked, what's that thing over there? It's not a thing, it flies. It's an airplane, my airplane. And I was proud to tell him I could fly. Then he exclaimed, What? You fell out of the sky? Yes, I said modestly. Oh, that's funny. And the little prince broke into a lovely peal of laughter, which annoyed me a great deal. I like my misfortunes to be taken seriously. Then he added, so you fell out of the sky too? What planet are you from? <laughs> that was when I had the first clue to the mystery of his presence. And I questioned him sharply. Do you come from another planet? But he made no answer. He shook his head a little, still staring at my airplane. Of course, that couldn't have brought you from very far. And he fell into a reverie that lasted a long while. Then, taking my sheep out of his pocket, he plunged into contemplation of his treasure. You can imagine how intrigued I was by this hint about other planets. I tried to learn more. Where do you come from, little fellow? Where is this where I live of yours? Where will you be taking my sheep? After a thoughtful silence, he answered, the good thing about the crate you've given me is that he can use it for a house after dark. Of course, and if you're good, I'll give you a rope to tie him up during the day and a stake to tie him to. This proposition seemed to shock the little prince. Tie him up? What a funny idea. But if you don't tie him up, he'll wander off somewhere and get lost. My friend burst out laughing again. Where could he go? Anywhere, straight ahead. Then the little prince remarked quite seriously, even if he did, everything's so small where I live. 
And he added, perhaps a little sadly, straight ahead, you can't go very far. And that's chapter three. Let's read chapter four. <laughs> a little bit more of my tea. I've learned of something really cool to put in my tea and it actually tastes excellent. And I was reading about it and it tastes really good in hot chocolate. And I imagine in coffee too, but I haven't tried that. So it's maca, M-A-C-A, maca root from Peru. Where'd you go, Clay Clay? Where are you, buddy? I think he wants to go out. Okay. That was how I had learned a second very important thing, which was that the planet he came from was hardly bigger than a house. That couldn't surprise me much. I knew very well that except for the huge planets like Earth, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, which have been given names, there are hundreds of others that are sometimes so small that it's very difficult to see them through a telescope. When an astronomer discovers one of them, he gives it a number instead of a name. For instance, he would call it Asteroid 325. I have serious reasons to believe that the planet the little prince came from is Asteroid B-612. <laughs> This asteroid has been sighted only once by telescope in 1909 by a Turkish astronomer who had then made a formal demonstration of his discovery at an International Astronomical Congress. But no one had believed him on account of the way he was dressed. Grown-ups are like that. Fortunately for the reputation of asteroid B-612, a Turkish dictator ordered his people, on pain of death, to wear European clothes. The astronomer repeated his demonstration in 1920, wearing a very elegant suit, and this time everyone believed him. If I've told you these details about asteroid B-612, and if I've given you its number, it is on account of the grown-ups. Grown-ups like numbers. <laughs> when you tell them about a new friend, they never ask questions about what really matters. They never ask, what does his voice sound like? What games does he like to play? Does he collect butterflies? They ask, how old is he? How many brothers does he have? How much does he weigh? <laughs> how much money does his father make? Only then do they think they know him. If you tell grown-ups, I saw a beautiful red brick house with geraniums at the windows and doves on the roof, they won't be able to imagine such a house. You have to tell them, I saw a house worth 100,000 francs. Then they explain, then they exclaim, what a pretty house. <laughs> Here's the little prince on asteroid B6. Dash one two. Well, uh, are you having a good bone chew? <laughs> so if you tell them, the proof of the little prince's existence is that he was delightful, that he laughed, and that he wanted a sheep. When someone wants a sheep, that proves he exists. They shrug their shoulders and treat you like a child. But if you tell them the planet he came from is asteroid B-612, then they'll be convinced and they won't bother you with their questions. That's the way they are. You must not hold it against them. Children should be very understanding of grown-ups. But of course, those of us who understand life couldn't care less about numbers. I should have liked to begin this story like a fairy tale. I should have liked to say, Once upon a time, there was a little prince who lived on a planet hardly any bigger than he was, and who needed a friend. For those who understand life, that would sound much truer. The fact is, I don't want my book to be taken lightly. Telling these memories is so painful for me. 
It's already been six years since my friend went away, taking his sheep with him. If I try to describe him here, it's so I won't forget him. It's sad to forget a friend. Not everyone has had a friend. And I might become like the grown-ups who are no longer interested in anything but numbers. Which is still another reason why I've bought a box of paint and some pencils. It's hard to go back to drawing at my age. When you've never made any attempts since the one of a boa from inside and the one of a boa from outside at the age of six. I'll certainly try to make my portraits as true to life as possible, but I'm not entirely sure of succeeding. One drawing works, and the next no longer bears any resemblance. And I'm a little off on his height, too. In this one, the little prince is too tall, and here he's too short. And I'm uncertain about the color of his suit. So I grow up in one direction and another, as best I can. In the end, I'm sure to get certain more important details all wrong. But here, you'll have to forgive me. My friend never explained anything. Perhaps he thought I was like himself. But I, unfortunately, cannot see a sheet through the sides of a crate. I may be a little like the grown-ups. I must have grown old. Enjoy your clean room. Enjoy it. Hi. <laughs> which was a major job, I can do daily cleanup. So it's going to stay cleaner, longer, and we can get ready for some garden fertilizer. I usually make a pile of manure and then wait a year before I use it. But I have a friend who, she started just in the winter putting the manure straight on her garden row and she had a better harvest last year from doing that. So I'm gonna experiment in half of my garden doing this. Not for every vegetable but probably like squashes and melons and maybe even beans. I don't know, I'm gonna think about that. Well, hi, babe, are you coming to visit me? Oh, beautiful. 
Found where the eggs are. They're all hiding. I found the stash. A lot of eggs. Hi, boy. <laughs> Hello, bugs. Okay. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> when Harry has trouble walking with her back legs, this mandolin strap, it's loose. 
but it cradles her belly and we've been able to go for walks when her legs get weak. Come on, Harry. But she's been getting around today. Come on, Harry. She's ignoring me. Hey, let's go this way. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Hi, girl. We can go down the stairs so much easier. Here we go. Yes. Oh! <laughs>